Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me in a very quiet London. Of course, this is during the UK's lockdown period. Now, once a day, we're allowed to go out and take a walk as a 911 goes past, to go and do some exercise, to get out of the house very briefly. We have specific guidelines to do so only in the local area, but being fortunate enough to live right in the centre of London means we can take a walk around to see some of the cars, some of the cars, residents' cars living parked on the streets, and some of the other supercars that are about and around town and I've heard there's some pretty cool stuff to go and see so let's take a look around and see what we can find here in London during lockdown Unsurprisingly, London, as always, is littered with G63s. Sat in black G-Wagon cruising down Park Lane, but the roads here are so empty compared to normal. Of course, there is some traffic. At the moment, we have these specific guidelines, as I mentioned. Here in the UK, you can go out daily for exercise, you can go out to the shops infrequently for groceries, you can go to medicine or medical requirements, and you can also go to work if you're unable to work from home. You are allowed to travel to work, hence why you do see some cars moving around on the streets. But I think today we might be able to spot an SLR, which I believe is parked just around the corner from where I am now. I'm hoping we might be able to find a Carrera GT later on as well, but we will see how we can do. If you're also wondering why there are so many potentially nice cars out, it is of course because the roads are empty. There's no traffic. Everybody who has a nice car is driving it when they can to go to the shops, but also because the roads should not be congested and the weather is quite nice as well. So we will see what we shall find on this little wonder. What was I saying about G63s? Everywhere. One goes flying down Park Lane. And I've also already seen a couple of older Porsches having their legs stretched out on the roads too. And bang on cue, look what we have here. The Mercedes SLR McLaren, one of the original coupes, incredibly long bonnet, iconic design, early 2000s, hypercar almost at the time. A few unique things about it. And this one, like many cars that we might see right now, is very much in need of a wash. Of course, currently living out on the streets. You've got those turbine wheels very metallic silver wheels looking nice against the black paintwork these gills on the side of course up front you've got the supercharged v8 the side exit exhaust but one of the things i think that always let the car down was having that five speed auto gearbox for the slr coupe they also had the roadster then they had the 722 and the 722s which was the roadster version of the 722 and then of course the sterling moss as well came after that one of the, I think, pretty special cars from the early days of my car spotting videos. And this is kind of a return to car spotting for me, roaming the streets of London a little bit to see what cars are around. And in fact, I'm going to come down this way because there is something else lurking in this line of cars that I'd quite like to show you as well. A particular Lamborghini, in fact, sandwiched by two very British cars as well. But down there, we have the Lamborghini Huracan Performante. Behind, of course, the Bentley Flying Spur. Behind that is a Rolls-Royce Silver Shadow 2. But in the middle, we've got the Performante in the dark grey. You've got the Tricolore stripe down the side of it. The 640 horsepower, 5.2 litre naturally aspirated V10 in the Performante, the hardcore version of the Huracan. Of course, we now have the Evo. The Evo being the facelift updated version of the Huracan with the shared engine from the Performante, but the slightly softer car. So in the future, we will see a more hardcore version of that as well. For the time being though, this thing is, well, a bit of a beast introduced Lamborghini's ALA, the Aerodynamica Lamborghini Attiva, where the active aero kind of works through the end, kind of components of the car, through the wing for example, letting air out through the underside. Very, very striking rear end with those gigantic tailpipes as well. And then of course, as I mentioned, Silver Shadow 2 right behind it, the flying spur in front. Lots of nice cars then, we're ready to get us started today. Over the years, I have filmed many a cool car around here in Mayfair in the heart of London, but right now it is completely deserted. It has also just started drizzling, which isn't quite so much fun, but in front of me, we do have a Ferrari GTC4 Lusso, rather like mine, a V12 Lusso. I have to say, I do like the interior, the light-coloured interior. Of course, I had a light-coloured interior back on my FF. My Lusso has the darker black leather interior with the blue inserts. But yes, again, very much in need of a wash. Cars living outside, just getting dusty and I guess rained on as this is right now. And when was the last time that you saw the valet at the Dorchester without a single supercar? In the past, I've filmed Koenigseggs, Paganis, Bugattis, and all sorts lined up just behind me. And now it is complete silence. This is the most bizarre thing here in central London to see so few cars driving around. Obviously, a lot of people have escaped the city before the lockdown to go to their second homes. And now it's just, well, a couple of cars here and there. And another G63. They are really everywhere. Grand Cabrio. Also lots and lots of police cars out as you would expect. 
And here we have quite a rarity, a Bentley Continental GT3R. Now the GT3R was the hardcore limited edition version of the previous generation Continental GT. They only made 300 of them in total. They were either black or white and distinct with that green livery, the stripe that you can see over them, as well as the carbon front splitter, also a fixed wing at the rear. And inside the car, come and have a quick look, they did away with the rear seats as well. Strictly a two-seater, just a parcel shelf back there, a lot of carbon fibre, as you can see inside. Very nice finishings. It's not necessarily the lightest track car in the world but quite a beast the 4 litre twin turbo v8 i think it made about 580 horsepower in total and actually when i drove one of these for the first time the gt3r it was the first time i had driven a bentley that really kind of woke me up a lot more sporty than the standard version of course the new continental gt significantly enhanced in that aspect as well but this car i thought it was pretty cool and well they're pretty rare to see around and about now and here we have a ferrari california you can tell instantly the difference between a california and a california t by the exhaust tailpipes they sit above and just in Inside one another on the regular California and the T has them sitting side by side so easy quick tip if you want to know which is which when you see a Ferrari California a pair of Aston Martins we've got a V8 Vantage Roadster and a Rapid S one with a V12 one with a V8 park nose to nose I wonder if they belong to the same person actually that could be possible looking nice though either way straight from the old Vantage to the new Vantage um, quite a difference of course between the two but yes literally the next spot around town it's the new updated generation. Continuing with the theme, it seems, we also have the Aston Martin DB11 Volante, the black with the red roof. I'm not the biggest fan of those wheels, I'm not gonna lie. And then just up the row, we have the unmistakable shape of the Rolls-Royce Phantom, even though it is outside underneath an outdoor car cover at the moment, but you cannot mistake that for anything else. There is also, just beyond over there, on the old Porsche, you can spot a DB9 Volante as well. This is clearly the area of Aston Martins lurking around at the moment. This is a brand new Bentley Flying Spur. I've not actually spent any time around the new Flying Spur at all yet, but it certainly has a lot of presence, no denying that at all. And by the way, behind it just there, we have an S63 AMG, but new 20 registration, the current UK registration series, a brand new car. And we've also got Continental GT, there's a Mulsanne just there too. Now that GTC Fall so is the V8, distinct from the wheels. Those are the V8 style wheels. The other way to tell is, of course, that there's a plaque on the dashboard, which in this case says GTC Fall so T, as opposed to the GTC Fall so V12. But the easiest way to tell them apart is down to which wheels they have. And look what we have here then. Two Porsches opposite one another. The highlight of the walk today, the Porsche Carrera GT and the 911 GT3 RS Visac, plus two more Bentleys, including another new flying spur. But look at this thing, a very similar spec actually to the car that I recently joined my friend Tom from TGE when he went down to collect at Goodwood, black with the brown leather interior. This one though is over from Monaco. And again, like so many other cars, having been parked out on the street, it is in desperate need as well for a clean. But the Carrera GT is one of the greatest driving cars of all time. One of my favorites that I've ever been lucky enough to experience. The combination of the naturally aspirated v10 making a fantastic soundtrack of course manual gear shifter mounted high up there in the central console and the feel you have from it plus you've got the targa roof panels that can be stowed away inside the front storage area as well and i haven't really spent too much time looking over the car before from the back obviously you can open up the engine bay but looking through these meshes you can see the suspension system down there this engine was originally developed for motorsport porsche didn't enter into the various different races so it's found itself into this car which followed on from the 9 and I guess preceded the 918 Spider, a completely different change in technology, but this thing just glorious. And of course, opposite it is the 991.2 GT3 RS Visac. Now I had a 991.2 GT3, the RS even more hardcore Visac with the carbon fiber bonnet, also the carbon roof and an even bigger wing at the rear, about 520 horsepower out of that thing. PDK gearbox, seven speed dual clutch, very different driving experiences between these two. But this thing, absolutely stunning, amazing to see it. This and the SLR both out during today's walk. Now, just a few other words, by the way. I'm sure some of you might be wondering, why am I not wearing a mask at the moment? Well, here in the UK, the guidelines, as per the World Health Organization, are that they don't recommend it at the moment. If you think you might have the virus, you need to be staying at home, not going out for a daily walk, for example, like this, to prevent the spread of it any further. And also, obviously, social distancing, staying apart from other people, and just walking around, taking a nice look at some of these cars, um, to see them out and about, and avoiding anyone I possibly can along the way. Another G63 rumbling through. As well as that, up there, we also have a Rolls-Royce Wraith just casually chilling, parked up the road. 
A few things stand out in that line of cars. Firstly, of course, the bright yellow Corvette, but secondly, I think there must be about three Bentleys, two Conti GTs, plus the Bentayga, plus if I swing the camera around to the other side, we have two more Bentleys. I've seen a lot of Bentleys lining the streets today. I haven't previously really realized quite how many there are of them. Beast. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Brabus G700 in Mystic Blue, I should point out nonetheless. The color of my SLS Black Series. That sounds amazing. <laughs> it looks amazing as well. Just had a quick chat, what an awesome car. Previous generation G for the Brabus G700 in Mystic Blue, looking stunning. And we've got ourselves a McLaren Sport Series. 570S cruising through. A few Rolls Royces around, Ghost there. There have also been a lot of Aston Martins today. Another Rapid S comes through. Maserati Gran Turismo. That is one of the best sounding cars ever. 4.7 litre V8. Thunderous. I'm gonna miss those sounds in the future when cars can no longer have quite that grumble to them. In fact, I just wanna hear them accelerating away. Yes. Nearly missed it, but an AMG GTS just went around the corner. And looky what we've got here. A Lamborghini Huracan Evo Spider. Satin yellow. Very cool. What a way to cruise in the sunshine. Yet another G63. And we've got another Lasso. Cruising by, valves closed. Very quiet. And shielded behind the bus. Ah, from Russia. Yeah, unusual. I suppose the BMW i8 still looks pretty cool. Very concept-like. It's odd still that they brought that into production, just like a concept car from a motor show. Very sleek Rolls-Royce Wraith cruising down the other side of the road. Lifting on through. Look, there goes another one. G63s. I've seen so many G63s today. And also so many police cars. Police cars totally everywhere. SVJ on the plate. It's nice, it's an S63 though, not an event to the rest of the day. <laughs> there is a 458 Spider parked here, and I tell you what's amazing, is how quickly cars get so dirty parked outside in London. I mean, this needs a proper, proper clean up. Look at this, even around the tail light back here. And that's presumably just a couple of weeks or maybe a month or so of being parked on the streets. Maybe the owners have gone out of London. That's probably part of the reason why many of the roads in the center of the city are completely deserted, but that is, yeah, filthy, parked here under the trees. The second Brabus G700 of the day, 700 horsepower out of the G63, absolute monster. If you like cars that stand out, you can't do much better than a Lamborghini Gallardo Spider wrapped in gold chrome, actually parked with the lift system lifted up as well as it happens. But gold chrome, um, yes, it's quite striking. It's actually a navy blue roof. I wonder what color the car is. Maybe it's white or something. That would look good uh, with the blue roof. I'm not necessarily sure that the blue roof and the gold is the best combination in the world, but nonetheless, still um, quite a fun thing. Oh, I wonder what that was in the background. Something with an interesting engine. Anyway, Gallardo in gold chrome. That is the DB11 AMR, which you can spot by the bright lime green brake calipers and also some of the trim that it has on the interior. You can see the bright green touches and the central stripe on the seat, which I think are unique to the AMR version, the slightly more powerful, revised, updated version of the DB11. Up there is a California T, which I mentioned earlier. You can see the exhaust tips side by side. It's quite fun after seeing the normal California at the very beginning. And with a Rolls-Royce cruising on by, there we pretty much have it. Oh, and an S63 as well, S63 Coupe, very nice. There we pretty much have it for today. And if you're familiar at all with these areas in central London, this is really quiet. It is actually the Easter weekend as well, so even quieter than it might otherwise be because of course, many of the supermarkets and the like are closed as well. But as per the UK guidelines, which I will link down below if you have any questions, it is all very clearly explained on the Gov UK website. You can go out for a number of reasons, including going to infrequently buy groceries there's something interesting in the background you can go out for medical reasons you can go to work if you can't work from home I think that was a Range Rover SVR over on the other side. You can go to work, you can't work on phones. I think that's what many people will be doing. And of course, you can also go out for a bit of exercise as well. Some daily exercise, stretch the legs, as we have done today, seeing some pretty cool cars as well. The likes of the XLR, that grumble of the V8 behind, XLR earlier, the Mercedes McLaren SLR, and the Porsche Carrera GT, and a few other pretty nice cars as well amongst the traffic driving around. But what an unusually 
quiet day here in central London, but a bit of fun as well for me to return to the roots of car spotting. Of course, where the Shmi 150 channel began around Mayfair, around Knightsbridge, around central London, but with a bit of a different outlook today, because of course all the hotel valets are empty. There are very few incredibly cool cars. More Bentleys, Bentleys everywhere. Bentleys, Mercs, G-Wagons, Lissos, those kind of cars. Bentaygas, we've seen lots of them as well. But thank you very much for watching, as always, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, the car spotting in central London here today. So thank you very much, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.